Hey, everybody. <laughs> so are, are Jason we, Burmis here. What this are we is uh, Disco Dylan Avery, if you don't know. Um, Dylan, of course, the mastermind behind the Loose Change series. Um, we're going to try to get, we tried to get together one more time before I leave for Iowa. Um, thought it would be fitting today. Originally, I had just scheduled for six. Um, just got done with my interview with the uh, guy from, he was supposed to be from Wire, but then Esquire. You know how that works with journalists anyway. And um, he's not with anybody. He's, he's, a, he's, he's a, a freelance freelancer. journalist. He's a freelance journalist, sure. But I mean, at this point, almost everybody's freelance on everything anyway. Cause we're and just... what is journalism, you know? like I asked that question today. As Esquire, like, when was the last time you even thought about Esquire? The other thing is with Esquire, it's like, you know, one of the things I brought up to him is, you know, in the fact check of Flight 93 and the 8 Mile Debris Field, if that were on DylanAvery.com or BurmaSBrigade.com or whatever, right, and you posted that, well, it would be fact-checked. <laughs> I would try to link to sources, and I would try to highlight a part of the sentence and then link to the source that backs that up. You but know. they're wrong, and there will be no fact-check under that Esquire article. I, they, at no point, and you can go check out the article and all that good stuff, will it be fact-checked. And that's the craziest thing. It's like, well, why do well, I? Well, the have fact to checking do? is their article in their opinion. You know, they are doing the fact checking, <laughs> so they don't need to cite any. Sources. Well, the, well, the thing is, he he contacted me a few days ago and said they were fact checking for the article. I know they emailed me too, and yeah. I ignored them. Well, I know you did. <laughs> I, I, I said okay, um, but the thing is, it's like, well, if you can't fact check the same, you, you use the word trope in your article. This is a trope that's been rolled out, and just because it's Hearst Publications, and it's... Well, that was my other thing when I was looking into Esquire, and I was like, oh, Hearst owned, yeah. Oh, right. they're Hearst also. I didn't yeah. mean, I was I was referring to... Uh, Esquire is Hearst, so... And that, and that was the thing, too. I was like, Hearst, Popular Mechanics, Esquire, yeah. <laughs> and then nothing I say is going to change this article. I'm good. But, uh, yeah, well, I didn't expect it that way. But, again, you know, at least we got to defend ourselves again and again. But... I get to get them on and say, well, you know, what am I supposed to do? Believe the evidence, my own eyes, the eight-mile debris field? I kept asking, well, what's... What's your explanation here? None of these people even saw a body. And he's like, well, well, I don't know about the body thing. And I'm like, all right, well, allow me to. Well, but again, like, how about the helicopter footage that was aired immediately afterwards? And there, I'm sorry, but there's exactly. no identifiable plane debris from a 757. Well, what he said then to me is, you know, well, those are the first people. A lot of these are from witnesses there first. And I go, okay. No helicopter footage that was aired. Well, well that's the thing. <laughs> well, he, he then, and so he, he used the word special circumstance. And I go, well, now you're asking me to believe a magic trick. That somehow... What's the special circumstance? <laughs> planes crash all the time. That's what I said. It's not. I go, show me one other plane Just crash. because terrorism is involved doesn't <laughs> automatically make it a special circumstance where planes can just not leave behind evidence in a field <laughs> when they've crashed. And the fact that none they of the... can leave red bandanas, though. Perfectly intact. Ziplocked for the Musawi trial. <laughs> But <laughs> no blood on them, no head attached. Well, how about the fact that there was like no jet fuel contamination reported for the soil tests? Yeah, so bizarre. Again, um, you go watch it. It was interesting. We want you to get your questions and comments in uh, right now for uh, Dylan and I on the 19th anniversary, which to me, again, is, is really just another sad day that we never got the justice we deserved. The trials were never there. No one was really, uh, Dylan, held accountable. And... You know, how do we march forward? I know you're trying to do so with uh, Seven, and tomorrow they're going to show 17 minutes of it. We're going to uh, hopefully air a clip of this that nobody's ever seen before. We nobody's seen any of it except for the trailer that went out today, like yeah. and the teaser. But I mean, we're starting to show clips. So, so, so tell people about the project and how how we can push forward on this and why it's important. Right. Um, well, you know, last October I think I was approached by architects and engineers for 9/11 Truth. Uh, they were in the process of wrapping up Halsey's report on Building Seven. Uh, and they wanted to do a documentary about it, highlighting the findings, highlighting Leroy. Uh, Facebook, not Twitter. Gotcha. Um, I have sent Burmis a clip, and I advised him to acquire it before going live. <laughs> but, you know, here we are. But it's cool. I'll jabber jaw, and he'll tappa tappa. But, um, yeah, so they approached me, and they wanted to do a documentary specifically focused on Halsey and the study, and, and specifically Building 7, obviously. And that, to me, was exciting because, you know, again, this is a subject I haven't touched in 10 years, more. Um, 2009 is when American Coup came out, so it was a nice way to reapproach the material and uh, approach it from a different angle and also from a, a more professionally produced angle. I mean, you know, we have an amazing director of photography and sound man, so it's a very professional looking documentary. Um, it's got a nice sheen to it that 
you know, some people might not expect from the truth movement or mm -hmm. from architects and engineers. So, yeah. And we've, um, you know, we've got the legendary Ed Asner doing the narration. So that's one of the reasons it's kind of taken so long because we had one narrator and nobody really liked him. And then I narrated it and I definitely didn't like it. Um, and we were negotiating with another celebrity supporter of architects and engineers, but he was being kind of difficult about it and was like, oh, well, where's all the stock footage of uh, government uh, officials questioning the collapse of Building 7. And I was like, that's not a thing. I mean, there's people like calling into C-SPAN and stuff like that, yeah. but there's no like, I mean, there's there's congressmen that are like questioning the destruction of evidence at Ground Zero, but there's no like senator or re representative on TV going, we need to look into Building 7. So he And that's why this has never been a bipartisan issue. I can take aim, you know, the, the only guy that really took any aim at 9-11 in any meaningful manner in the halls of government was Dennis Kucinich at the time. Oh, God, that's right, Kucinich. Kucinich named it by name and had three uh, separate... Uh, basically, he tried to... See, when impeachment was a real thing and they pushed back for the military-industrial complex and it was based on evidence and they didn't let you do it, he had 30, I think, two articles of impeachment, the last three directly with 9-11. Forget about the weapons of mass destruction. Forget about the illegal wars. That's when they were like, that kook Kucinich wants to impeach him for real war crimes? Fuck that! <laughs> Ukraine. That's where we are. I'll just say one word, Ukraine. It's weird, right? Well, you know what I find weird is I'm, I've been seeing a lot of tweets and posts today from everyone basically complaining about the post 9-11 not like complaining but you know they're just like hey you know it's 19 years later and we're still living in that horrific aftermath that we all feared was happening in the immediacy after 9-11 and i mean to me it's like that's like why loose change exists and that's why i made it you know that's like it, there's a lot of common ground that i feel like is being skipped over with a lot of people out there who still are just like oh 9-11 truth bunch of conspiracy nuts but it's just like okay but really at the end of the day like we may disagree on like how 9-11 happened and the a lot of the finer details about it but like the implications of 9-11 and where it has led us as a country like and we still are and we, we never, still are they've never pulled any of it back there's ne they never pulled back the shoes they never pulled back the TSA. We're never still pulled back in Iraq. Security. We're still in Afghanistan. Everyone says Trump's going to pull out the troops, and I'm just waiting for it to actually happen. The the, the uh, Authorization Act. All these things have the Patriot Act, which keeps getting renewed every four or five years. Right. You know, and only more and more large scale outward spying on the American public. I mean, I remember when me and you used to talk, you know, in those early days, with, even before the second edition was out. And I was like, dude, man, they're track tracing the database of every fucking one of us, I promise you. And you're like, oh, perfect. Dude, when I, when I lived in D.C. and when I was working on yeah. Loose Change, I'd always joke to people. I'd just be like, oh, say hi to the NSA, you know. Yeah, yeah. And this was like 2004 yeah. I was joking about that shit. But we, you know, we would have these long discussions and be like, man, this is headed not only in the wrong direction, but it's kind of already here. Mm -hmm. And as, as I've seen technology take off, you know, we probably couldn't have thought about being in the nightmare scenario we are today a year ago. When we were sitting down, you know what I mean? Doing our first one of these. There's no way we could have. And even prior to the lockdowns, you know, me and you were conversing back and forth, and I didn't want to be right. And then all of a sudden, it happened. Mm -hmm. And now, where's the where's the pullback? We got, we got the worst outbreak in the country in Oneonta, New York. Oh, my goodness, except for no one's in the hospital. So what's the metric? Is it 1,000 positive tests? Is it 2,000 without a hospitalization? I have no idea. Man. There is no me metric. They all look at me like I'm nuts, and they go, well, someone could get sick. I'm like, you're telling me that there's 800-plus people with it, and no one's in the hospital, and we have a community of 14,000 people with all the college kids. What's the number? And they look at me like, he's lost. Wear a mask. <laughs> mask up, bro. Cuomo for life. Well, because you know Donna, right, from SMT Studios? We we were there. We met her. She was at the end. She was at the nine eleven oh seven events, and we met her. I'm in sure, the, if I saw her face, the recording studio in New York City, yes. where we were doing the voiceovers yes. and the yes. final. And there was a guy the there cut. too, and then we ended up spending the night. Brian, there. yes, yeah, there Donna and Brian. Time. Yes, Donna got it. And she got really fucking sick yeah. for like three weeks. Like she couldn't breathe, sure. like respiratory issues. So, uh, but th there's two 70 year old owners of this roller rink uh, that my buddy Dan is doing a documentary about, and I'm the producer and editor on, and they both got it. And when they got it, I was like, oh no, they're done for. Like there goes our interview, and they're fine. So I don't know. I know people that have gotten sick, and I know people that have gotten Listen, it and are and fine. I, and I'm not saying that you can't get sick, right? But are you going to be hospitalized? If you're on the verge of that sickness, why not go with the treatments that are out there? I'm not going to mention them. I don't want to be harmful content. You're not allowed to fucking say You're already anymore. demonetized. It doesn't matter. Well, really. I mean, all right, let's just look at it. Like, they already... 
authoritative rules say that I can talk about what? Um, it's dextromethasone, which is a steroid. Mm. I've been talking about steroids you've, for a long time. And then remdesivir. But then remdesivir is the cousin of hydroxychloroquine, and they've demonized that. But they admit vitamin C and vitamin D are vital to have to fight this thing. Well, they're vital to have in general. A exactly. I mean. a exactly. Um, here's the thing. I've always said it was real. I have always said that there's a chance that it isn't one thing, right? That's the other thing. I mean, look what happened in China. Look what happened in Europe. Well, and that's Iran my said. big thing about a lot of the reverse hysteria about it is like everyone's saying that it's like an American hoax and it you know, was perpetrated by the Democrats so they could well, you know, interfere they're with the election. Well, util I utilizing at this point. Right, but I mean... You the, can't argue that you want fucking mail-in voting for any reason. No, and again, it's yeah. like every country is going to respond to a, this in its own unique way, but to me it's the fact that it is in every country, which is why I can't like unequivocally just be like this is a hoax or this is Well, I don't that. think it's a hoax, but I mean, you know me, it's a predator. Listen, you show me the billionaire that went down that couldn't stop this thing, and I will stop saying this is manufactured in any way. We we have to look at the facts. And the facts are this. The CCP called out the US government for a bioweapon. They did that. I'm not the fucking CCP, <laughs> okay? Okay, number two. When you, when you and I were talking about this early on, yeah. I was like, look, I don't know. I can't draw any conclusions. This yeah. is literally just happening right now. One thing that I could believe, which isn't to say that I do, but I could believe that this was something that was engineered that accidentally got out. Well, there goes to my next point. So you have that end, and then Iran jumps on that bandwagon, and then on this fly, we've got the China virus, and we've got Mike Pompeo, ex-head of the CIA, current Secretary of State, saying the narrative of it leaking from the Wuhan lab is a correct narrative and that they lied about it. So here's the deal. You, uh, you go with that route of, okay, it wasn't a bioweapon, it was a failed vaccine or something they were working mm -hmm. with and studying, and it gets out of the lab. Any way you look at it, it's man-made. <laughs> Any way you look at it. And that's if you're buying into what I like to call the Johnny Nonsense secret sauce <laughs> bullshit that fucking... You do oh, love your Johnny nonsense. Oh, it's there. Because you, you end up with, uh, again, this idea of red versus blue. America versus communism. Freedom, but, you know, you build this new Cold War that's already kind of in our face. And you build the narrative, there's no way it could be a class of people above government that meet and are in control of just, you know... Certain, I don't know, private intelligence groups that now work for the CIA, the NSA, <laughs> the FBI. You know those ones. Every single fucking one of them. And then you privately hire one of these guys, and they're in a bio lab, and then just magically it gets loose in places. Mm. Oh, well, that, well, then that's not an American operation. It's not a CIA operation. It's not a Chinese operation. It's a literal fuck you. We're billionaires and trillionaires, and we've run shit for a long time. Suck our musty nuts operation. Okay? Maybe that's why you got demonetized, <laughs> is saying shit like that. Maybe it has nothing to do with I don't know how I could illustrate it better. I know. Okay? I think that's yeah. accurate. Okay? And it's a consortium, man. And if I'm not allowed to say that based on the evidence of the he said, she said evidence and the Nobel laureate saying it has HIV inserted and it needed to go through, you know, I'm not a Nobel laureate, <laughs> but you know what I am? Somebody that has a fourth grade education and can read and watch and understand when there are articles about Nobel laureates saying these things, then find the video where they said it and use my eyeballs and ear thingies. <laughs> ear balls. They're yes, called ear balls. Ear balls, yes. To ingest that information. I am that smart. I'm not Nobel. I'm not a laureate. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, and then if I can't share that information with other people, if I'm expect to take it and digest it into a yogurt-like oatmeal substance that is not a brain, and be like, you know what? I like Tony Fauci. <laughs> Tony Fauci is numero motherfucking uno, and I'm 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 100% World Health Organization. Woo woo. All right. Uh, questions, anybody? Listen, before we go to the questions. We're going to play the clip right mm. here, guys. Why don't you set it up? Uh, so, this uh, segment of the film comes about, I think, 20 minutes in. Um, Leroy has taken on the project. He's gone to New York City. He's seen the Ground Zero site. Uh, he's met with Tony Zambodi uh, from Architects of Engineers. He's, given, he's been given the brief, the rundown, if you will. Um, so now, uh, oh, actually, no. This uh, includes him going to New York. That's right. The the clip that we're showing tomorrow for architects and engineers is him talking to his students. So about how long is this one? This is about two and a half, 
three minutes. All right, so three minute teaser. You get seventeen minutes uh, over at the architects and engineers. Well, you so get well, you get the trailer and then a clip, and then we're going to talk for the other ten. So oh. you're so you're going to get like a three minute clip tomorrow and a discussion. That's with not me how and Gage sold it to the audience. Well, you know that's <laughs> Richard Gage. You know, we, oh, we, 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 Gage. We love Richard, but you know, there's there can be some crossed wires sometimes. Right. So here we go, guys. Let's let's get to it. Exclusive clip. That's right, right here on the Burmese Brigade. I was flown to New York, and there I began to see footage, and I began to see the area, and I walked around the area. It was a, a few days where we, I was educated on exactly what happened, where it happened, what the conditions were, soft footage that I could get, and so forth. Let's just talk about the overall problem. The building had a symmetric freefall uh, that occurred suddenly over eight stories. I mean, the, the entire building, the footprint of a football field, each floor was the size of a football field. And, you know, no steel frame building is ever completely collapsed due to fire. Uh, that's a concern. It, it looks like the core was removed for eight stories mm -hmm. to give, to promulgate that eight story freefall. So that's about as symmetrical that collapse as you can get. You can't get much more symmetrical than that, no. no and you, you can't. can't, you can't get something like that unless you create it. You see the east side penthouse coming down first. I see that. You see that? Yep. And then the, if you look at the shockwave, it only goes down 15 stories. If there is controversy, that means that not everyone's satisfied with the answer. If we can change that, if we can give the public and the engineers an understanding of truly what did happen, it's worth it to me to be able to do that work. don't develop first impressions. I can't afford first impressions. I develop material and then from that I develop what I think are the conditions. I'm, I'm really kind of shocked. I mean I knew I knew this but it makes no sense that you would not Save take the steel. the steel. I mean we do it for planes, we do it for sure. anything that br breaks. This girder is A2000, it's uh, designated A2001. Its shop drawing has never been released. Really? No. Why is that? Uh, that's a good question. I really, 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 really do enjoy complications. And the more complicated, the more I enjoy it. When I first started, I had a couple of students that were really interested, and they spoke to their families, and they just chose not to work out it. They th thought it was too risky. You know, it was a couple of students that had spent their lives thinking about this. So. Powerful stuff from Dylan Avery. Really looking forward to seeing that. That's really interesting that, you know, they had to talk to their parents and ultimately decided that they didn't want to be a part of it because, you know, but, you know it could. It could ruin your academic career out of the gates. And uh, those are just some of the thought crimes and repercussions that you know, may not outwardly be finable, but we're seeing more and more in society. Well, a counterpoint to that, I think it's interesting that the front page of Halsey's final report and the draft report too, but more importantly, the final report has the seal of the University of Alaska Fairbanks on the front page. So they have, for all intents and purposes, uh, sponsored and supported his findings and have been very supported throughout the entire four-year process. He was, he was never like a leper in the community or on the campus. You know, he's, as, as someone who was there and saw him walk around the campus, he is highly respected. Um, so yeah, so let's 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 go to the chat. Let's right, see what we got. I just want to remind everybody, guys, we are fully demonetized here, so there is no super chat. So if you want to skip the line of what is probably a very long chat at this point, since we didn't go uh, to it till 19 minutes, you can do so here on the GoFundMe. I will check this every five to ten minutes, and we read the comments. Uh, Gritch, wow, that interview with John was something else. Props to you, my brother. No way in hell. I could have stayed as cool as you could with such an ignorant little hey, I'm not gonna call him that. <laughs> if I well, people are very passionate <laughs> here, you know. I know they are. People got opinions and shit. I learned any uh anything uh if I learned anything from this interview, it's just how ignorant and stupid a lot of people are. Lord help us. Uh why is Ryan Dyson so hard on loose change as a documentary? Would you debate him? 
Um, maybe on a neutral platform. I know he's not going to come on my show, and he's trolled me for like 15 years. And Who's Ryan Dawson? He's again? the guy. He's one of the Israeli everything um, guys, and you know he attacked us for the Pentagon again and again and again. He attacked me personally while I worked at Infowars. You know how that goes. Mm -hmm. You know I have a lot of haters. This face is very punchable. <laughs> you must. You got to admit it is. <laughs> it's a punchable face. Patty, thank you so much. We will keep up the work. Great work. Melanie, thanks for putting the link over in the uh, GoFundMe. Uh, I sometimes do not share all of Jason Burmis's opinions, but in my work, he is doing good, genuine work. Well, oh. thank you. That's so great. And guys, what we're going to do, again, is uh, we're going to hit up those as, uh, as super chats, but... Let's get to it. Let's, let's get, get to the regular chat. Yeah, let's get to the. Let's regular. get to the common folk. The, well, everyone's common. I'm I, kidding. I, listen, I'm kidding. All I'm saying is, you know, I'm demonetized. I'm moving across the country. I'm not a rich man. I'm not rock. I'm not. Gold. I'm not knocking it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not I, knocking it. Do, I, do what you got to do. I, exactly. What else am I? Again, I, I would love to be able to be hired by a agency or a news organization or someone to put me on television. The fact is, out of all those people that were quoted in that article that bashed us pretty hard. Who's going to do my show? That guy. That's it. Jonathan Kay's not doing my show. Jim Meggs isn't doing my show. Uh, Mr. Cuban, I know you called it ludicrous. I'd love to debate you about 9-11 at any time. You think I'm getting him? You think I'm getting Cuban? I don't think so. El Cubano! No, I'm not getting him. <laughs> so I'll take what I can get where I can get it. That's Jason Burmis's motto. You know it's been there for years. You take what you can get where you can get it, Dylan. Wow. <laughs> Looks like I'm the first in the chat. Thanks, guys. Perfect timing. Love the vids. Thank you, Yolanda. Uh, oh, some Jack Daniels in here. Mm, oh, a little JD. A little JD. I was just going to say that. Mm, yummy, yummy. Uh, hey, listen, Karen, Scott, hello. Oh, there's, whoop, the, whoop, big, there's whoop. the big jump ski. Whoop. Oh, my God. Okay. All right, there you go. Let's see. Uh, I don't know what to say. Thanks for everything you've done in this country and the issue. Loose change is why it's still watchable. Thank you. Joe Lane, woohoo! Loose Change is life changing. I've been sharing it left and right. So, so you got my copy of Loose Change on DVR with printer label. Yeah, that's bringing it back. Where's the DVR part? Right here behind me. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Right yeah. There. Um, what a start to a 19 year journey. Getting published by Esquire is like beating Dick Cheney in a foot race. <laughs> Hey man, they're hard up for content right now. Like they're they they're literally doing anything. Is that true? Esquire. I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean I, I don't know much about it. Anymore. I don't know much about anything anymore. The magazine industry has been shot. Your Twitter account gets more engagement than Esquire's. In fact, I'm pretty sure going off of what I saw, their article yesterday was like their most popular thing in a long time. Weird. I, of course it is. Well, because Cernovich retweeted it. So yeah, I know I did. I, I retweeted Cernovich. I'd like. But to it's just again like their regular articles that they post on their Twitter. It's nothing, man. It's a fucking graveyard. <laughs> Well, again, that's why they have to curate content so they can keep those kind of organizations in business that are taking money from non-government organizations or NGOs like the Gates Foundation. Good luck, guys. It's controlling the narrative, but not Jason Burmis. Fuck you. <laughs> not you guys. You and know that's I mean. why you're not going to be on the news. That's fine. Okay. Listen, you know I can play it straight. I know. Yeah, I know. listen, when I was on InfoWars and I had all those Christian listeners and I couldn't curse... Oh, I bet it was just eating you up inside. Oh my god, the not cursing. <laughs> that was one of the, like the This is a much more true to form Jason Burmis. I agree. Here. Like, listen, why do I have to be someone different? You I don't, don't. I don't want to I don't need to fucking put a mask on, folks. This is who you're getting at fucking Denny's. All right, do you get it? Like it's not I'm not different. <laughs> Am I? I mean, you do have your Denny's face. <laughs> What's that fucking I don't a know. pile of bacon in my mouth? Yes. yes, and home fries. Oh, I remember. Oh, you remember the they had like the bottomless home fries? That was like mm, not my thing. Back back in the day, I was the Dagwood sandwich guy. Mm. That's what I liked. A lot it was of just Dagwood. two three in the morning, you'd go into Denny's and you would just have the bottomless home fries and just dip them in ranch. And fucking just... burn my lip, dude. What? I'm talking about food. Like you see the red mark on my lip and why it's so so shiny. Here? Oh yeah, what so happened? I, I fucking so I decided to make myself. Some white Alfredo pizza, right? Like mm -hmm. I got a su like a big, you know, thick sub roll. I got Alfredo sauce. I got all sorts of cheeses and fucking um, pepperoni, the whole thing. And I even let it cool off. But the the cheese had sealed over the Alfredo sauce, so when it came out, it squirted out. It it's like lava, <laughs> like uh, dude, dude, like cheesy lava. Immediately burned my fucking mouth. Fucking spit it out. I didn't even get it to my tongue. Like, you usually burn your tongue? No, it squirted out of my lip. And, like, now I'm dealing with this and Neosporin on it. And you know I can't keep my fucking mouth shut. So my lip keeps cracking there. Yep. First world problems, folks. 
See, Jason Burmis is just another asshole. Anyway. <laughs> he burns his mouth on his Alfredo pizza just like you do. Prego. Prego. Exciting. Prego. <laughs> Prego. Getting published. Oh, sorry. Really sad. Every anniversary is sad. 9-11 never. It is sad. And it, and it, and it burns me up. But again, this like Alfredo sauce it burns. It burns me worse than this. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I'd go through life like this for the rest of my life if I had to. Okay, if it meant the truth about nine eleven. If you flipped me on from the inside out about how burned up I, you know how much sleep I've lost over this. You fucking know. You know. If anybody knows, it's you. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not putting on a show. I'm not putting on an act. I'm not fucking dancing around like a monkey for fucking one side or the other or one ideology. This shit was real to me, and it's as real as it gets. And it's as real as it gets today. And that's why I sit there and I show real evidence, like, hey, here's Joe Biden, but when he could speak. <laughs> when he could speak. No, you know, 14 years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In 2008, talking about the ISI cover-up. And then you can't even own up to it. I'm like, Dan Rather has a fucking... Uh, a, a whole segment in 2002 about him being protected by the Pakistani military in Pakistan in a hospital. Prior to this, Bin Laden. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I put it, I put in fable enemies because I thought it was important, you know. And so now you got a narrative where you know General Mahmoud Ahmed gave up 100k. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Supposedly, that's one fifth of the fucking money. Should be important. <laughs> Then you got a narrative where because it costs so little money it that was the, that was the tragedy about it's it. A very nice keen. That's thank a very you. Very nice. Thank keen, you. Yeah. It's, I haven't watched that clip in years, but it's burned into my memory. Exactly. So so you have that. Yeah, you know, because five hundred thousand dollars is just nothing. Mm hmm And especially again, half a million went a long way back in the nineties. Um, so let's see. Oh no, we just got a donation, but we didn't get a super chat. Well, make sure you get your super chats in. I really do appreciate. Speaking the of which, what's that? Yeah. Um, so let's see what best way to contact me is Twitter DMS. That's what I check the most. Um, don't get me wrong. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on my email, but at, like out of everything I check, cause the, I have the, some, the you tweets. know, you get a ton of stuff, right? I, I can't do it all. And I appreciate everything. And if I miss you and I forget to call you back, it happens. I'm an asshole. I mean, I got two little kids downstairs. I'm trying to prep for this move and there's a lot going on. A lot going on. I was just going to yeah. say that. A lot going on. Um, no, never forget building yeah, like seven. Everyone's tweeting me and emailing me through my website. I thought seven was going to be out today. It's like, no one ever said that. Sorry. <laughs> it's, we're working on it. We're, we're getting there. He tried, but no response. I'm sorry, buddy. Let's see. Have you ever felt pressure from the government agencies directly to change your message? Nope. And are you indirectly doing it today? Nope. No and no? Um, that's a weird question. I Not guess really. I, I mean, it, I guess how, how many times did we get asked that at like screenings and shit? Like, well, are sure. you, has the government come after you but, guys? I mean, at this point, you know, we've been pretty, you know, open and honest about everything. And I, I you know, I've talked about maybe being intimidated by people. You remember that one little fit yeah, older but it, guy? But it was never like a government. No, but that's the thing. It's never. It would never be like two guys in suits who were like, "You, you, you here's guys, the deal. You guys need to stop talking about 9/11." You want a little cash key and hutch? This is what you need well, to talk about. Well, not even that, like, but you know, you know I mean? just like, like intimidation tactics or bribery. But yeah. I mean, but no, I mean it's it's indirect. That's how they deal with it. They deal with us by going through the media. Yeah, you know, the media deals with us, so the government doesn't have to. Thank you. That's a great point. And, and again, when the media will parrot a lie, like we've been saying, oh, Indian Lake's the second fucking place where all, all the debris is. And they just can lie for 15 years, and they're the authoritative source. Hey, you remember when CNN was sending a camera crew to that second debris site on 9-11 <laughs> and said that we'd be hearing back from them soon, and then we never heard back from them ever again? I remember that. I remember that also. <laughs> you but. think that if they didn't find anything, they still at least would have reported back and said, we didn't find anything. Hmm, no, no. Mm. No. Anyway, I'm, you know what? You know I'm, what sure, I'm sure that's not important it, it at is, all. It's kind of whack now that we're talking about it. You know, all the NIST files and the videos. Like, every time we get to that demolition of seven, there's no audio. Anytime, like, it's almost there, like, all the audio is always cut off. Oh, no, I got clear audio. Well, I mean, of the, of the collapse. Yeah. You know, I got that. But I'm talking about, like, right before, as it happens. Like, like five minutes is missing, and the audio is there before, and it's just, a, I guess I'll have to show it to you, share it with you. Yeah, well, because I, I found one of the NIST cumulus that you can hear something yeah, right well, before it comes down. Well, I'm not talking about the building itself. I'm talking about those around it talking. 
like the police getting perimeters. There's so many. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that all that's gone. Oh, okay, I know. You're, so basically, evidence of the countdown is what you're. Well, about. whether it's a countdown or just what these people were saying to everybody, right? To get but back. The, the chatter beforehand. Exactly. Okay. That, we could go with that. I wouldn't want to be misquoted in Esquire. <laughs> Jason <laughs> Burris really? says there was a countdown. He didn't hear headline. Asshole. <laughs> That's uh, just why I don't deal with those people because uh, they're just so sorry. fucking predictable. That's what are you gonna do? Uh, let's see. What's this? Uh, let's see. J- um, thank you, Jason, for my rant. Thank you, Mo Roddy. I was watching WikiLeaks videos on YouTube as a sophomore in high school when Loose Change popped up in the recommendations. The good old YouTube days. Mm. Remember those? The mm, days. I remember when you could send direct messages through YouTube. Yes, and you could actually connect with people, and mm-hmm. it made sense because that way you could connect with another channel, and now YouTube's like. No 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 we don't no, want no, you connecty no no no, no, no. YouTube no, no, monopoly no. <laughs> uh two of my my younger heroes well thank you Steve thank God for men like you stay strong I made a DM all I Twitter. made a DM <laughs> sorry is that really I made oh, I, no, made, I, I, I made I made DM D. oh I made DM I was oh! gonna say. <laughs> he said it info fighter not me. I didn't. I wasn't picking. I don't any. know, Info Fighter. It depends on what you're sending me too. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I saw it and I was not interested. If it was a dick pic, oh, please don't encourage somebody. Like that's the last <laughs> kind of trolling I need is to open up dick pics. Jesus Christmas. Uh, can I get a signed copy of Loose Change? Is that available? Probably not. You know, I mean, we, we. I remember they always felt weird, even like when we went to something and they wanted us to sign DVDs. Yeah, and it's like I'm not a fucking celebrity. And, uh, yeah, man. I like. I'll do it. I'll do it to I, make people happy, but it's just. It's it's, it like, definitely feels weird. Yeah, and it's like I could never see myself like putting out a book. Not that it would ever be promoted and doing like the signings. I mean, I guess you kind of have to run through with it. I thought about putting out a book only because that way I could stop giving interviews to journalists <laughs> and you know, like any any yeah, time searching I would, for Dylan Avery, you'd be the next just, Bobby Fisher, or whatever, just like. A, a, a memoir of just everything that happened and you I know, be how I feel about it. Out, but you know, you'd like, can you imagine like actually getting it out there and doing the book tour? No, no, no. Okay. I mean, I, I could, but I just don't know that I want to be like, oh, well, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. No, that would. Oh, no. well, thank you. No, because you know, watching a movie and and then selling them afterwards, it had a different feel to it. You know, not everybody was asking. Well, for we were time. giving all our shit away too, so people yeah. were tr- wanted to support us by buying stuff. So. Yeah, it was a different feel, and I don't know, man. Uh, you know, especially attaching yourself to such a big tragedy. There's a lot of people that are just going to come after you and criticize you on that point alone. That how dare you have an opinion about this event that took lives. Well, and, and again, like that's the thing that always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Everyone was just like, you know, they just did this to be famous and you just wanted a filmmaking career. It's like, why the fuck would I want my first film to be a successful internet documentary about the biggest tragedy to ever happen on American soil? Like, because what, the media what, won't do their job. What fucking <laughs> asshole would want that to be his the start of his career? Like Nobody. Wh- nobody. Definitely nobody. not me. Nobody. You know, it was supposed like, to be just like a little film that I showed people in my spare time. Like, hey, here's what I think happened on 9-11. And not like... I, they wanted to like, associate us with like the bum fights of the internet. Only worse. You know what I mean? Seriously. Like, like, somehow we were exploiting people. Like Somehow we were worse than people walking up and finding crackheads on the street to, to, to literally fight with one another and get uh, tattoos on their head. We were lower than them in some people. Lower than bum fights. Bum fights lower. All right, let's see what else yep. we got. Now, a 29-year-old, all I can do in helping my 6- and 2-year-old grow up to understand these elitists, see us, and want to destroy If humanity. you're 29, why are you typing like a boomer? I mean, he probably, he, he probably just hit the, hit the caps lock. Hit the old, yeah. I know. Yeah. It happens. It's but, fine. By the power of woe, he is he bro. Jeez. 9-11 woke me up. Um, let's see. Smiley face. Uh, you know me. Fist emojis. bump, flame, smiley, smiley emoji. You're more than welcome to read those out. I will not. I, I just did. Will Hillary be celebrating 9 11 today? Of course, with an ambulance standing by. I'm sure Hillary's tweeted something. Uh, Dylan and Berman's. You know what Berman's does? Of great ketchup and mustard. <laughs> I get it over at Aldi's. <laughs> Your great. namesake. I, it's it's Berm S. And I know you love uh, people like the berm ass. They like to throw the extra. Ass oh yeah, there. of course. I, some people go with the U. Berm. The U is not really the berm us. Berm us. Yes, oh, or, yeah. or yeah. Some, every once in a while you see an I in there. People don't know what to do. Weren't you James Borman in one? I think what was that? It they was called like James Borman. someone called you James Borman. No one could ever get your name right. <laughs> no, it's fine. It became like a running joke. Yeah. It's like, all right, what are they going to call Jason <laughs> this time? James Borman. James Borman. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. 
Uh, the people who smear and name call have never persuaded me in any way. When I hear an empty smear, I investigate. Oh, Thought Drifter corrected himself. Um, Asterix Burmus, LOL. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Oh, no, see, he did. Hmm. Usually I end up respecting the victim of the smear. Well, hopefully I presented enough uh, evidence for those that were tuning in to see, um, you know, the mainstream media version of 9-11 versus the not mainstream media. Hey, let's make it go viral. Uh, again, I'll, I, I will take on all comers. Anybody, listen, I'm not that smart. Take a fucking look. How could you not beat me? Like, I, I never graduated college, okay? I, I, I don't have a Nobel Prize. I've never been the editor of a major uh, publication at all. I am like gas station level intelligence, okay? You should fucking dominate my ass. I wouldn't go that far. Well, why not? I, listen, I'll shovel shit, kid. If I, if I got to make a living and I can't get it, you know I'll do it. You know I'll just take whatever job I can. At no, I'm just saying, in gas station Well, you know what I mean, man. Much. I'm not the fucking smartest dude in the world. I, I've been a registered jockey. I, I, I'm, I still flip a pie now and then. You oh, do love man. your UFC, too. Is I, I, mean. I do. I'm a fucking monkey. He, he said mouth breathers. <laughs> My fucking nose is like, you know, literally um, stuffed up all the time. But now I can't blow it or cough because now I'm a fucking disease around here. People literally look at you like you're Satan waiting for a coffee in an uncomfortable mask because you coughed. And that's just my morning styling. Don't like it. Um, you want to take the next question? Uh, sure. I'm, I'm just trying to get to the end. Uh, you know? Oh, yeah. We're not getting to the end. <laughs> but I don't. Oh, I mean, we're basically just reading people's comments. We need to look for actual questions. That's true. Oh, wait. We got, we got some super chat. And again, no, we don't. We just have don donations. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Miss Smith. We uh, we do appreciate that. Okay, so let's 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 get to some actual questions. All the co kids are college. All the college kids are p positive. Yeah, twenty six thousand plus across the nation. Not one hospitalization. I don't think it's real. You still got the McDermott handle on there. Oh, I do. Why didn't you say something, dude? I I noticed it before you went live, and then I just noticed it again now, like thirty six minutes later. Avery. So. That's fine. Now you know where to find them. We'll just take that right. <laughs> Heyo. Hey all right, uh, efficacy studies, world of exercise, China. All right, keep going. Yeah. I, I can do this much quicker than you. You're yeah, more than welcome. Not going to stop this criminal agenda only by talking and twittering. Okay, well, if you have any ideas. Secret Sauce BS. Yo, Event 201. You two are my fucking heroes. Thank you, Jay Wan. <laughs> Less than 200 watching how. Who knows? Back from the big ride and Jason's back on. Yes, he is. Uh, if you like the like button, there may be a good chance you become immune to the COVID. Okay, wake me up. Wake me up inside! I was thinking more like before you go-go. Uh, before you go, go. Uh, J1, respect, respect you, brother. Thank you. Gates got musky nuts. Cool. Does Dylan have a YouTube? I do, but I don't put anything on there because nobody watches it because I have like 400 subscribers. Um, hey, I, go I did, I did, I I did put Avery. on, I did I put on my horror cats trailer on there. I, <clears throat> and I did a deep fake of Red Letter Media's Rich Evans as Alex Jones. Interesting. Which is a very, very niche audience of people who will. Yeah, Enjoy I don't, that. I don't even know what the guy yeah, is. If, uh, you, if you know Rich Evans, it's funny, but that's about it. All right, so I don't have a YouTube scroll. That was more profane than dangerous. Cool. Fire 420, man made virus for controlled demolition. Why are so many shutting down all these treatments? You try to get them uh, COVID stuff. Loving this live stream. If anybody believes Trump is not uh, one of them, I'm afraid, need to be surprised. Whoa, 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 hold on. If anybody believes Trump is. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Good, yeah. Don't pick on Southerners, Jason. I'm not! That wasn't uh, just a South. Come on. I didn't even know what Listen, point of the conversation they're referring to at this to point. I'm moving to the Midwest, but I'll tell you what, Dylan. I wouldn't mind. I might even love a Southern lady in my life. That'd you probably great. will. A nice Southern belle. I mean, I listen. First of all, we said nice little farm girl. I take what I can get, but Southern. I think that would work out for me. I don't know. Maybe I'd not. take a nice country girl. You know, I like the country. Uh, constant cursing should stop. Sorry. My bad. Jeez. We have a little bit of uh, time to stop that. Be no mistake. Cool. Tony Zamboni. Cool name. Yeah, well, not Zam not like Zamboni. Zambody. Uh, S-Z-A-M-B-O-T-I. Uh, Jason, what's the best way to contact you? He already answered that. Trump was born into the Them Club. Force can't stop us from winning this war. We do it live. Thanks so much for this. Ooh, KG, KGP. Good as always trying from what I've seen so far. Which platform will 7 be on physical? Oh, oh there you go. There, there, there. We have an actual <laughs> question. All right. Uh, what platform will it be on? Uh, 1091 Media is working on that. Um, they're currently prepping it for outlets and trying to figure out who will take it. Uh, that's one of the reasons we decided to go with 1091 Media, who approached us, which is great because normally with a distributor you have to 
bang on their door and they normally don't get back to you. So with 1091 approaching us, it seemed like a godsend because my private upload the other day of seven for architects and engineers to che check out uh, got deleted. What? The private upload of seven now got deleted off of YouTube. Wow. It was up for like a half hour, and Kelly was watching it, and she's like, uh, the upload just got deleted, and then did I checked my an email. email. I did get an email. What'd they say? Uh, just like, same same as when they deleted my Loose Change 2nd Edition unlisted upload. They said, this goes against our community guidelines. It's like, motherfucker, nobody's watching. Oh, I just swore again, I'm sorry. But it's just like, nobody's watching this. Like, it's not public. Like, how are you people finding this, and ha like, and how are you determining that it's against the community guide? It's gotta be footage of 7 falling, or it's gotta be like... Oh, they probably run the algorithm against, yeah, any of that. Which is... You know, kind of crazy to me because, you know, Fabled Enemies, I don't think it has a ton of views on my channel on my re-upload, but it definitely has over 10,000, right? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, even though I don't talk about that, that might be it. I don't ever use the term controlled demolition on 7 or anything like that. I just show the footage. Yeah, but... It's probably a coupling. But we don't even say that. We don't even say, like, controlled demolition or implosion in the upload. That yeah, I mean. but even, like, explosives might trigger it or anything. Nope, nope. It was Act 1 and Act 2, and none of that stuff is in either of those parts of the movie. So it had to be either footage of Building 7. <laughs> so anyway, what platform will it be on? Hopefully all of them. Uh, if we He get... means Hulu. He means Amazon. He means Netflix. All of them. All, all the, well, hopefully Netflix. We'll see. I mean, I would be kind of, kind of shocked if they took it. But it is 4K, which, you know, they like. Uh, Artex and Engineers should be the name of the doc. So good. Well, too late for that. Sorry. Uh, just one question. Uh-oh. I'm afraid to see the rest of that. Why'd you do it? No idea what you're talking about. Um, what? The Jews killed Jesus? Maybe that's why? I, I don't know. know. Okay. If a building that wasn't controlled demolition fell, wouldn't it fall for... Yes. So that's yeah. actually... That was one of uh, Professor Halsey's findings when he was running his simulations of Building 7, that even if he did fail all the elements inside the building that NIST said failed, the building would actually just topple over and not collapse. Am I insane, uh, or was Luke Radowski of We Are Change a part of this also? Uh, no. It was not a part of it. However, uh, Luke started We Are Change, uh, promoted it, did some uh, events with us, and uh, his footage is in uh, Fabled Enemies, especially the Biden stuff. So that's kind of like the uh, <clears throat> the correlation. Tangentially there. involved, but was yeah. not directly involved. Yeah, no, inside. no, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jesus, these people. Lake Witted in a desk. Good, bad, saying. I'm the guy with the dun gun, evil, dead. Yes, it's cute. What happened was America fooled and killed their own city, so invaded and steal. When does this come out? Uh, hopefully, right after the election. Uh, thumbs up. A couple months. Dylan, you are a legend. Hey, thanks. We're both truth warriors. Um, looking forward to watching it. Are you saying our scientific community is totally compromised? Yes. Yes. Uh, Wait, hope. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Yes. Not the entire scientific community, but when it comes to topics such Which as these. Which would be impossible because the scientific community is what? Made up of diverse people and organizations. Well, but it's it's like people saying, oh, you think that the government was behind 9-11? It's like, no, I don't think that like the post office was involved, you know, but I think that there's a select group of go people in the government that benefited from the attacks, and we can leave it at that. scooby dooby doo <laughs> Uh, let's see, we got the definitely... Was 7 released today? No, it wasn't. I, I mean, I understand why people think, but no, it wasn't. We're not just going to dump it on YouTube so it can get nuked. And, yeah, like, and all, already obviously And nuked. thousands of dollars and a year's worth of work just goes down. All right, we got one. We got a super chat. It's from Gritch. And he's going to go, what's your guy's theory on what happened, uh, what hit the Pentagon? And this is what I'm going to say to you. Oh, boy, here we go. I'm going to say this. Uh, you do well to watch the Loose Change Final Cut Watch along with me, which gives out all theories. And then I'm going to give up some updated information of some photographs that came out that allude to the fact that maybe Cheney was in that bunker after the fact and Mineta was wrong. It's or, odd. well, no, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I would say this uh, the Pentagon is a, a big question. It still is. Whether you believe it was 77, or you believe it was a drone, or you believe it was a missile, or a missile with a drone, or you don't believe any of those things, why don't we, to this day, have any video footage of what happened there? That's a big red flag, and even any footage we got today could be totally compromised with the technology we have. That's yeah, I mean, at this point, if anything does still exist, it's either been squirreled away for that purpose, or... Yeah, is not coming out. Yeah, basically, I, I don't think we're gonna have our Zabruder film moment. Like, no, and I mean, to to me, like, if that isn't enough for people, I would just like to know why the three hundred and thirty degree turn. Yeah, the one that defies like any kind of G. Well, just why? Why the turn? 
Like if Instead if you're yeah, down. yeah, like if you're if you have hijacked a commercial plane and you imagine that there's probably fighter jets coming for you soon if they're not already on your tail, why would you? Or anti-missile defense from the ground. Anything. Yeah. Like you, you, time is of the essence when you are conducting a terrorist attack. I would imagine, and so taking time out to to make this 330 degree turn, dropping like seven, 8,000 feet, adding an, an, at least an additional 5, 10, 15 minutes, however long of the approach. It's been way too long for me to know offhand specifically, but why the turn? Why not just do this and just go down? Go and just crash into the Pentagon, which you're literally looking right at. Like the turn makes no sense. And in order, and the, you accomplish that maneuver just so you can hit the one section of the building that's been reinforced to withstand a terrorist attack. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a crazy person, but that just seems a little bit too coincidental. And I would just say this um, the lack of visible evidence, especially on a building that should be more than protected, right? Well, and that's just, that's one of those things where it's just become such a sticky part of talking about the Pentagon, where I just, yeah. I don't even go there anymore. Because you have, you have the, 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 section of the truth movement who has now dedicated themselves to proving that a 757 at the pentagon and for them they're like oh well look at all these plane parts and so for me it's like i'm just not even going to go there anymore yeah i'm just going to talk about the fact that it shouldn't happen it just shouldn't happen there's a ton of anomalies if it did happen any any which way whichever way it happened we should have footage of it clear footage of it and we don't uh and, and, and that's I, it and i like to always say you know you want to look at that but that's why there's a huge correlation to Flight 93 because now we have a plane crash, supposedly in an open field, and there's so many anomalies there. They're telling us not only an eight-mile debris field, but like I played earlier, they're saying they didn't find bodies on the scene when they were the first ones there, or a plane. So now you have to ask... Yeah, how many first responders were like... We had three of our own uh, in, in Final Cut. No, I know, but like, how many first responders are on record? There's one specifically who was like, "We thought we were at the wrong place." Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, when a plane crashes, you know that you're there. Like, you, you, you know, you follow the wreckage and the smoke and the stench. Like, you don't just show up to where they've sent you and be like, "Is this where the plane crashed?" Like, you know, you're very. It's aware. like a whitest kid you know sketch. Like, <laughs> oh, is this where the plane crashes? basically oh that's how funny. is hashtag loose change doing today i don't know i, I guess don't know. give it a searchy search yeah truth of 9-11 searches disturbs the first force in which blah, blah. the truth of 9-11 disturbs the force in most people which they have no allegiance or obligation to care cool uh black eagle trust fund i think dylan's face looks what more punchable than mine oh <laughs> you know what i guess I, that's fair i think that's gonna do it what do you think are, are you ready to give it a go you, I, I am. I've been out because I, I did like an hour plus over here. Oh, yeah. And we, how long have we been going? An hour? No, we've only been going 46. Oh, 47. Okay. I did an hour and like 15. Did I ever locate Barry Jennings? Uh, no, he's very dead. It's he was, wait, we don't want to say, or was he really killed? Dylan, just briefly tell the story after we interviewed him and what happened then. Well, it was. I'm trying to remember when, because you said to me at one point privately, you're like, you, yo, like Alex is getting calls from people saying Barry Jennings is dead. And I didn't believe you. I was like, ah, there's no way. I'm sure he's fine. Um, but then it got confirmed, like, um, yeah, I think like September 2008. Yeah, everybody thinks that, like, you know, we're making up our sources or, like, we, we didn't do an investigation. You know, we when we're talking about the Pentagon... We went and had lunch with Bob Pugh and got him on the record, and that's the first guy with a camera on the scene. If you've ever seen footage of the <laughs> Pentagon crash site, it's probably Bob Pugh's footage. Yeah. And today, guess what he shared on Facebook? What's that? Loose change Did final he? cut. Did he? Awesome. Thank you, Bob. Weird. Thank Weird Bob. that the first videographer on the site of the Pentagon, whose footage is probably being used by news networks today, he shared the third edition of Loose Change Today on Facebook and is still very much a friend and a, and a good connection. And yeah. Just a great guy overall. So yeah. like, And, uh, you know, I, and I, I always say to people, you know, you, people criticized us so hard and continue to use the same tropes, but if you look at what we did from the second edition to the final cut, we spent time at all these locations. We, we went to the Pentagon. We interviewed um, Father. Oh my God, I, Stephen McGraw. I think yeah. Father Stephen McGraw. Like we interviewed. Um, Boyd England the, was there. No, uh, the twins. Uh, the Sh Shinky uh, brothers. The right? Shinky brothers. Shinky brothers. Thank you. Yes, yes. The Shinky. We we found eyewitnesses that no one else had even found before. But they act like we were some kind of keyboard warriors in our basement that were just concocting things up up out of nowhere. That was the first thing we decided to do when we started having like a little bit of money. We, we were, cared. Like, we we were like, well, let's we were like let's go out and shoot some interviews. Like yeah. we got money, like let's use it. Yeah. Let's do the thing that people are accusing us of never doing now that we actually have the resources to do it. Like 
But I made the first loose change. I didn't have a budget, and I still went and interviewed Marcel Bernard. Yeah, who, who <laughs> was one of the flight instructors of the, of the alleged hijacking. Like, I was always trying to get interviews and cite sources and not just cobble a bunch of shit together on my laptop. That anyway. Ne- that was never it. That was never the goal. So, sorry, Q&A. Yeah. We got through some of you. We got, we got through a lot. And, look, this is an anniversary that's kind of heavy on my heart. Next year is the 20th anniversary. It feels more like history. You know, again, this is kind of like the intermediary anniversary. Like up until like yesterday, it didn't even really feel like nine eleven. Because so much is going on in the world right now. It's just such a wacky fucking world. And you know, I think that there's a lot of uncertainty. I know there's a lot of uncertainty in my life. I feel I'm feeling. I don't know about yours, but oh yeah, a lot of uncertainty. I I, I do want to end with this. You know, Dylan's also doing a feature film. He shot it here. Um, I shared some of the footage. From your, um, what was it, the ambulance and fire truck thing from walking by. The I'm other day. very excited for Asteroid. We didn't even talk about it once, but I just finished directing my first narrative feature film, which yeah. is pretty fucking cool. So, I mean, I know that you always say you're going to get it edited down and you never do. What do you think, realistically, six, nine months, you'll have a rough copy? No. We already have like 70, 80 minutes of it done. Really? Mm hmm. Edit it up. Mm-hmm. Wow, look yeah. at you. Well, we got, we got deadlines. <laughs> well, here's here's the other thing to keep in mind. Uh-huh. With documentaries, you are writing the script as you edit. I mean, yeah, you have like a script for like narration. And, but like, especially when you see. interview people. When like, you interview people, when you have to go through hours and hours of footage and you constantly have to second guess like whether or not you're really making the best like argument for each scene and if you're using your screen time effectively. Mm-hmm. With a narrative, it's all there. It's all in the script. And the great thing about shooting a narrative is you have someone on on set called a script supervisor who keeps when, people on. Well, not only that, but like if you like if you've shot nine takes and on the last take you're all like, yeah, that was the take. Script He's supervisor, got a mark. Script supervisor writes down, all right, take nine, or like if someone improvs something, we were like that. Oh, and in take three they added this. So literally, like you have a roadmap for when you sit down to edit. Awesome. Narrative is exponentially easier than documentary. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. well no, because we uh, we're trying to get this out like asap. We got people that want to see it. You know, we got uh, festivals to submit to and there's some some uh, interesting plot threads in the movie that could uh you know <laughs> you know we'll just leave it at we'll, you know. we'll just leave it at that you know it yeah. it uh it could provide some catharsis for some people excellent well i'm looking forward to it and um guys again we're we're going to do i'm going to do the 911 uh watch along with the final cut be on the lookout for Dylan's stuff. I mean, the guy's done documentary films on everything from coffee to police brutality that you're not going to hear about. <laughs> it's true. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. My coffee documentary yes, that I never did. think about. Yeah, well, you never think about that. Why not? Well, it just, it's been so long, and it just, it was my first, it was my first time actually shooting a documentary, like, front to end, you know, like, yeah. like shooting it from start to finish and not having any archival footage or anything, and it was a learning experience for sure. But I, I still did it. No. I was living in San Diego. I had a camera. I had a buddy who joked about a movie idea, and I was like, "That's actually a great idea. Let's do that." So I still did it. You know. Follow him <laughs> at I am Dylan Avery. Please follow me on Twitter. Engage with my tweets that I never make, which is why I never tweet because I never get engagement. <laughs> what a great paradox. Yeah, you got to be out there. We're we're working hard. My problem is, it's just like I'll tweet something and then I'll just get no engagement, and then I just look at it and like. But I'm I'm like days go by and I have like nothing on. I'm like, well, f- fuck it, delete. You know, whatever. I guess that was a bad tweet. I don't know. I'm very self critical, so that's probably why. I do want to thank all of you that have supported and continue to support me over here. Make sure you're thumbing them up, subscribing, sharing, smashing uh, that notification bell. And guys, month man, fifteen of the GoFundMe. Don't forget. That, yeah, it's one thing to post this on your wall. You think that gets it out there. But the bottom line is, find a video that you think that is important, that has information somebody needs, and then DM it to them. And say, hey, check this out. That's how you spread. That's the real world of mouth in the digital age. It's not just posting. We can't all be social media influencers. We can't all have a TikTok account. You know, and that's funny. You know what? You I, should get a TikTok well, account. No, actually. and you know, <laughs> it's the funniest thing. So that the uh, John... Uh, McDermott, the I know who yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, he, he. I asked him what his next thing was, and he says he's going to go to a TikTok house. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ! Like, yeah. If you haven't seen these TikTok houses, they're nightmarish. Oh, they're bad. They're real bad, Dylan. But have fun, John. That's 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 for another time. Have fun, dude. Uh, again, guys, I want to reiterate. Check out the documentary films. They're free in the playlist section. Loose Change Final Cut. We'll be doing the watch along, but you can watch it without my big, greasy face. 
Uh, if you like fabled enemies, but if you like big greasy faces, tune in because you it's get greasy and yeah, big. You know, <laughs> um, it gets warm in here. It you know? does. He's get not. Warm. He's not greasy. He's sweaty. He's worked up a sweat I, from it's, being it's so a nice passionate. Sheen. Uh, fabled enemies, of course, in there. And then, if you want to know what's going on right now, what the big plan is, and why the United Nations is dictating our policy, I encourage you to check out Invisible Empire: A New World Order Defined and Shade the Motion Picture. If I am kicked off of this platform, the only place you're going to find me is Rockfin. Rockfin still hasn't gotten that exclusive of me on Adam vs. the Man Stay. It's about to. I'm uploading it after this. Dylan changed times for me, so I didn't have the time to upload it. I'm sorry. i got to be out filming the sunset to get the final shot for my narrative. But it's going to be free for two days. So if you haven't yet, go make a free account over at Rockfin, and then you'll be able to watch that. And I'm going to put it for the premium. And remember, if you are a premium subscriber, it is like a Netflix for creator. Creators, not only do you support me, but then you get everybody else's content, including Mike Cernovich, mm. including Ben Askren, John Fitch, who's fighting tomorrow night. Fitch smash, brother. I'm with you. I can't wait. Get that Gracie mother trucker. Fitch smash, huh? Fitch smash. You don't know John Fitch? He's nope. a Fitch smasher, let nope. me tell you. He's nope. my boy. Mixed martial mindset. Not my culture, not my scene, but good for everyone, <laughs> not in, including my culture, you. Not my scene. I'm just saying, like, everyone's got their interests, and UFC is not mine. It is mine. Guys, I love you, and I'll see you on the flip side. I guess I'll see you in Iowa. You'll go ahead, listen, we'll do it virtually. Okay. Well, there. that's what I mean. I, yeah. I will see you on yeah, a screen we'll get you. from Iowa. Yeah, yeah, of course. We'll do this. So this is it. This is the last time this you're going to be it. seeing this. So You never know. I could come back. I have a studio in a box. Like, that's how I, when I travel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah, seen yeah. your setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The mobile setup. All right. Well, later, y'all. Toodles. And cut. Hold on. I just wanted to say and cut. I know you did. <laughs>